In Delhi, the hippies are an irritation to the government and a front and an embarrassment to their own embassies. The attitude towards hippies in the 1960s, according to a BBC documentary. At the time, free-spirited travellers blazed a so-called hippie trail from Europe to South Asia and beyond. But some remained in uh, India. Welcome to Eddie's sh temporary shrine. Britain Tobias Moss has been a member of Goa's hippie scene since the 60s. But he's concerned the state is modernising its tourism at the expense of budget travellers. Last October, his close friend Eight Finger Eddie died aged 85. Uh, he's an Armenian-American and... Tobias says although hippies like Eddie put Goa on the tourism map, he feels their community is being driven out. Eight Finger Eddie came to Goa in 65 and came to Anjuna in 60, 69 and him being here was an event in itself and he attracted people. And the people who came here rented houses from the locals and there was this exchange of love, money and everybody gained. Now, with the event of tourism, the last 15, 20 years, mass tourism, charter flights and uh, hotels owned by big corporations, uh, that money doesn't seep through to the locals. And I feel that the Government of India Tourist Board are not interested in, in all the hippie freak element that live in Goa and would like to clean it up and make it like the south of France. And Juna's flea market is symbolic of the changing face of Goa's tourism. Set up as a barting venue for the likes of Eddie and his freewheeling companions, it now attracts high spending domestic and international tourists. So is this the direction Goa's tourism board is interested in seeing the state move towards? Uh, it is true that uh, a long time the image of Goa has been a happy destination where drugs and sex are easily available. And that image has been over a long time, but yes, that image has changed over the last number of years and we are also trying to project that image of Goa, the new image of Goa to the world. Uh, we are looking for high quality tourists also. We have uh, put out an expression of interest for a golf course. Uh, we are trying to set up a convention centre, a marina and also other uh, high-end uh, tourist facilities. So to the modern face of Goa's tourism and the boutique hotel. Casa Suzgard is owned by the British couple Carol and Norman Steen. They say their luxury approach is attracting a new wealthier clientele. We've all grown up with the, the idea of a holiday in the sun, two weeks pegged out on a sunbed getting a tan. And I think now people are looking for something that is quite different to that. And we offer people an opportunity to enjoy a beautiful pool, beautiful gardens was set in a beautiful village at the edge of the jungle, and it's an entirely different experience. Yeah, what we've noticed of late is that we're getting more Indian tourists, we're getting more people from further afield, from the States and from yeah. Scandinavian countries, who are, who are coming here because they want to see what India was like, rather than, rather than lie around on beaches, as Carol says. So an industry in transition, but with Goa's long reputation as a haven for dropouts, Tourism chiefs may find their goal of business over beatniks remains a distant prospect.